Let's look at the relationship between two different cultural perspectives, two major medical systems, Ayurveda and Oriental medicine. They look at the body, the same body, and they see different energy systems. In one case, in Ayurveda, we see a light system, and in the case of Oriental medicine, we see an electrical system. So what's the relationship? How can we put these together? into a single clinical model. What I looked at was where it began to, to uh, unravel the, the relationship. I was looking at what Oriental medicine says in the five element theory about the development of the consciousness, the development of the spirit. There's a particular sequence that's described of the, the elements in that developmental process. Uh, it's, it's called the hun, the hun and the Po, the development uh, from, from the metal element, which is lung, large intestine, as the, the meridians that are associated. Uh, so from the metal element, the, the Po, the animal spirit, begins to develop and uh, uh, eventually transforms into the, the, the Hun, the, the uh, the, the, con the, the human consciousness, the higher, higher level spirit. Uh, so from the metal element, it goes to the fire element, and then to the earth element, and then to the water element, and then to the wood element, and then it continues, this, the cycle continues. It's, it's obviously not, not only sequential, it's a si simultaneous interaction and motion in, in this cycle. As I'm pointing out in the body, there's actually a physical ci circle, circular rotation to the, the primary locations on an anatomical level to the, uh, the, the yin organs associated with those systems. You've got the lungs, which the right lung is larger than the left lung because the left, left thoracic cavity contains the left lung and the heart. So, so if we see the center of the, the metal element uh, in terms of being centered in the lung and the chest, where the, the, in, in Oriental medicine, the, the spirit, the jing, is, is breathed in through the breath. In fact, spirit, in, in our own language, spirit means breath. Uh, so there's an association of the spirit in the beginning of this initiation of this process of consciousness with the breath, and of course, I associate also uh, the, the initiation of consciousness with the senses. Uh, in the nest system, you'll see that there's an association between the, the sensory function and the colon, which is the, the, the yang aspect of the, the metal element. So, so this all begins to come together as a starting point of consciousness of the senses and the breath in the metal element. Now, where does that, where would that relate to the chakras? Um, it, it's kind of the coming, the drawing in from the, if we think of the, the non-local, the space around the body as being the source of the breath and the senses coming into form, coming into uh, the, the body. Uh, we, could, we could localize this as the, the root chakra, as uh, the relationship between the earth, the environment, are, and, and the body, uh, so that's, that's probably going to be the, the closest association that, that it's going to make, is, is the first chakra. The, uh, the second step is the heart, and in the heart the, is the fire element, which is the heart, but also we have, we have heart, we have pericardium, which is the heart protector or the circulation, uh, and we also have the small intestine, and the triple warmer or endocrine system. So this is really, it's a, instead of just two meridians in terms of the classical 12 meridian system of acupuncture, there's four associated with the fire element. So it's a dual system. And the heart in terms of the chakras would be the fourth chakra, okay, in, in the same region. We're slightly left of, we're left of center, left of the midline now where the, the lung or the metal element was to the right. Uh, so there's a motion from right to left in this, this first uh, step going from 
root chakra to, to the fourth chakra. But the fourth chakra is also, if you look at the seven chakras, it's in the center. So we've gone from the non-local at the base of the chakra system to the center of the chakra system at the heart, which if we think of it as, a, as a, a, an energy field, it's the core, core means heart, uh, and the, other, the others are, or, are located at the top and bottom of spheres concentric to the heart. So we came from the outer environmental relationship to the non-local uh, to the, the center, the core, the heart. And, and that's a dual system. You have the top and the bottom in, within that one chakra. It's almost like it's two chakras in one. That's how we're modeling that. And so we have from that, and it's also the strongest energy field in the body uh, in terms of, of major organs. The, the heart's electromagnetic field is measurable with, you know, with uh, Western science. It's measurable several feet away from the body. Uh, so uh, the, the fire element, uh, and, and, and it's, it's not only the center, it's, it's in oriental medicine, the heart is the, the seat of the Shen. Uh, it's where, so where the spirit lives. The Shen is, uh, uh, is the the the, uh, the the consciousness the uh, you see it in the eyes but it lives in the heart and it's also associated there's kind of two meanings to Shen in Oriental medicine so it gets a little bit uh, confusing in terms of the language but it's it's uh, associated with the wood element the final step of the, that Hun Po uh, development of the spirit. Uh, but the, the function of the heart is, is connective. It, it, it integrates the, all the other emotions and the other systems and the other organs. So it has a non-local capacity to, when we're heart-centered, when the consciousness, the spirit is heart-centered, it brings all the others into relationship, into proper harmony and balance. So that's super important. Uh, and it's a center of the emotions as well. Uh, an example of, of the significance of the heart in terms of consciousness is, for example, when uh, studying how people react to uh, visual presentation of slides. And when certain slides have, carry emotional content that's, you know, maybe someone being injured or a shark or something that will have, have an emotional response. The response of the body happens before the slide is presented. In fact, they found it, it happens even before the computer determines by random number generator which slide will be presented. So there's actually a real communication that happens in reverse time within the spiritual realm, the information, the consciousness realm. So uh, these get a little bit challenging to wrap our linear left minds, <laughs> left brains around. We're used to thinking Cause, cause and effect is cause happens at time A, then some time passes in which that cause plays out, and then there's the effect. But here we're seeing an effect that happens before the cause, before the cause is even known by the causal agent in the computer. Right? So it's a, it's a very real trans-dimensional communication, and that is, we have to understand that that's how the mind-body-spirit complex actually works, that we can get information communicated by our future selves, received by our present selves, that can help us navigate through this world and avoid dangers, and that's exactly what we're seeing in, in those uh, slide studies, where the, the responses come not from the brain, but from the heart. These, these reverse time signals are received by the heart. So the heart is trans-dimensional. It, it, it communicates across space with the other organs in the body. It has this non-local function, like a non-local function that we see at a quantum level, but here at a macroscopic level in biological systems, in, in sentient systems. And, and also trans-temporal across time, from future to now from the future to the past, from the past to the present, we, we know memory is, is, is a, a, an informational signal that, that travels from the past to the present. And that's going to be involved in the, the water element. Uh, we're going to get to, the, to the, a couple steps further down the line. So uh, 
they're kind of the, the counterbalance of each other. They're, they're, they take their place, you know, closest to the midline on the body. We've got the, the kidney, the water element, which is like the will and the memory and, and making choice. You know, a memory, memory is when we have something meaningful, has meaning to us, and so there's, there's a choice of the system to, to give meaning to that. We give the meaning in the heart, and, but we make our choices with the will, with the water element, and they, they work in a dual system. It's kind of like the yin-yang, the duality of the system that works as an integral system in navigation. Um, driving of meaning, directing of action, they work together. Uh, so, so from the heart, from the fire element, next described by the five element uh, system in terms of observing the development of the spirit and consciousness is the earth element. So we have the, the, the stomach, the spleen, the pancreas. These are all organs in this, this upper left quadrant of the abdomen, abdominal cavity. So it's, it's a motion downward from the heart. Uh, and in fact, there's, there's relationships there in reverse in disease where we see that uh, in electronic studies of the body that most heart pain, heart symptoms, angina, comes not from heart disease but from the pancreas, from stress electronically transmitted from the pancreas. The pancreas is the most sensitive of all the organs, even more so than the adrenals, which are water elements associated with the kidneys. But the, the aspect, if, if the senses were our main function in the, in, in the lungs and the, uh, the metal element, the fire element relating to emotions and meaning, now the, the, the uh, earth element relates to thought, to, to if, we, if we take a meaning like a word, like we have a sensation and we put a word to that to, to create a concept, a meaning, now we can string those meanings together and create thoughts and sent like sentences. There's syntactical structure, but it's a linear structure. A sentence isn't branching, it's singular, it's linear. And that's the nature of thought, we, we think. And uh, so it, it's, it's very much like the physical aspect of digestion where we break down the, the foods that we, we ingest the foods, and it's related to the, the fifth chakra. There's a relationship between the fifth chakra where we ingest foods and, and the, the, this earth element, uh, again related to the fifth chakra, where we also express language. We express these sequences of sounds that give meaning. And what do we do with the food that we take in? We digest it in the system, and we put it back together into particular, it comes in in sequences, like proteins, or se linear sequences of, of uh, peptides, and uh, RNA and DNA of nucleic acids, linear sequences. We break those down and we reform them into our own desired sequences that express our uniqueness, our enzyme structure, our DNA structure. But again, it's linear. And so from thought, we go to will, the, the, the water element. So the kidneys, bladder, that system, adrenals associated with that. And that's where we have to look at a branching structure. There's, it's like a Y shape. We, we're on a particular line of thought. Oh, but we get to a point where we have to choose. We're going to go right or left. We're going to say yes or no. Are we going to call that self or not self? How do we identify? How do we move? These are our choices. And so it's the, this is the seat of the will. And it's the third chakra. The, the, the kidneys are kind of behind there. Uh, and so from there, from the, from the water element, where the water can flow one way or the other, we go to the wood element. That water, what does wood do? It, it, it draws water, you know, it's, conventional science can't even understand how a tree, how tall trees, can draw the water that they do from the roots all the way up to the top branches. It's theoretically, it's too far for them to be able to draw that water against gravity. So there's, there's clearly other mechanisms, there's energetic mechanisms involved in that transportation of the water to produce wood, to make trees. But so the wood element in the body is, is about, it's the wisdom. 
It's the spaciousness. We go from a, a branching structure that defines a plane from a, that, that grew from that linear structure that defines a line of reasoning, of, of, of thought, that came from the, the singular identification of a, a point in, in our, 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 uh, our experiential space, our space-time experience of the senses, that we identify and make into a cellular structure of the mind, of thought. We give, give it form, we string it into, into, into structure or syntax or thoughts. We, we come up with the choices, the branching points, the, the choice points, uh, as they say in the NES uh, program, that define planes like a map. Like a map is, has, oh, there's a, there's a road and there's a fork in the road. But the real terrain, if we see, when we see the real terrain, it's three-dimensional. We could go through, under, under the mountain through a tunnel, or we could go around it, or we could climb over it. And when we see it in three dimensions, we have now more freedom, more choices, more options. We have the option to, to say yes or no, or, or you know, go, go over it or under it uh, you know, in, in the water element. But in the wood element, we have also the wisdom to say, we don't have to choose right now. We can get more information. We can wait and see. We can watch and see what someone else does. <laughs> Sometimes that's wise. We can learn from others, others' experience. So, so um, and then that feeds back to the, to the, the, uh, the metal element. And, and the cycle, again, is simultaneous. It's all happening all at once. We're complex beings, we're simultaneous beings at our highest level of function. At our lower levels of function, under stress, we narrow down and function in one area. Maybe we're thinking so hard we don't see, or we're, you know, we're, we're not functioning simultaneously and coherently. Uh, so the, the, the wood element is associated with, with two chakras, with the, the, the brow chakra of vision, Vision we know is associated with the wood element in Oriental medicine, the eyes and vision. And the second chakra, which is part of that same sphere or, or organized around the, the heart center, just like the fifth and third chakra of the earth element and water element are oriented, organized around the fire center, the central fire, the, the pyramid, the fire within. Pyramid means fire within. Uh, so. So we have now the wood element as its own sphere with the social, and, uh, the social navigation and the spatial navigation of vision. Uh, and so, uh, and, then, and then from there we develop out to, back to complete the, the cycle in, in terms of the, the elements and the chakras. We get to the metal element of the crown chakra, the seventh chakra, and the first chakra, being the relationship between the local and non-local, the self and the, the transcendent. 